Fun Fridays number three. I have a confession to make to you guys. I used to be a massive Harry Potter fan. I'm talking like I knew my Patronus, I knew my Hogwarts house, and I honestly probably could still beat your ass at Harry Potter trivia even though I haven't cracked one of those books open since JK Rowling became a transphobe. Speaking of JK Rowling being a transphobe, this isn't the main point of the video but I feel like I kind of have to address it. Very recently JK Rowling went on an insane transphobic spree talking about Iman Khalif, who is a female Olympic boxer, and a lot of people both online and offline who are very right wing, and even some liberals just started calling Iman Khalif a man and about how she doesn't belong in women's sports even though she is a biological woman. But because of this online harassment that Iman Khalif received, she has officially started a lawsuit against JK Rowling, which is really funny because JK Rowling is known for hitting people with lawsuits if they say anything bad about her at all. Even if the things they're saying are true, she will still sue them. Well now, she is being sued by Iman Khalif for online harassment, but the story just keeps getting even funnier because JK Rowling once tweeted that she would happily go to prison for misgendering someone. So I guess it's very possible that we will live in a time where JK Rowling might get a jail sentence for being transphobic. Do I think that's gonna happen? Absolutely not. And that's not even to mention the fact that a ton of black mold was discovered inside of JK Rowling's house when a Twitter user just looked at her profile picture. And that led to people comparing the same wall from a different time period to it now and you can see the difference in black mold and this led to a ton of memes that were making fun of JK Rowling saying that the black mold had eaten her brain so much that it turned her transphobic but that's not why I'm making this video at all. I'm sure all of you already know this, but there are currently two different theme parks within Universal Studios that are themed around Harry Potter. You have Hogwarts Castle and Hogsmeade, and you have Diagon Alley. Two theme parks that make absolute 100% sense when designing a theme park around Harry Potter. But about four weeks ago, Universal Studios released this video that we're about to take a look at, where they describe a third, more sinister theme park that's coming to Orlando Studios. So I figured maybe we could just sit back, relax, and take a look at this absolutely awful promotional video that Universal Studios put out. But first, what's up? My name is Connor McDowell and I'm currently campaigning to be People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive for the year 2024. If you like this video and you think I should be nominated, just click subscribe. One subscribe equals one vote for me to be nominated to be on People Magazine with the word sexy somewhere around my face. This is a lifelong dream of mine, so it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe. I'm also currently recovering from three separate surgeries within the past year, so I have a GoFundMe linked in the description if you are willing and able to donate. I'm also going to be doing a 24-hour live Twitch stream very soon to help raise funds for that GoFundMe, so keep an eye out for more information about that. Also, please follow my Letterboxd. I really like Letterboxd, and you should follow me. And I also made a new Twitter, so you should definitely go follow that. Okay, now it's time to make fun of this video. I may have lied before a little bit where I said that we're getting a brand new Harry Potter theme park. Technically, it's not just Harry Potter. It is a massive theme park, and it's going to be called Epic Universe. Horrible name. Absolutely terrible name for your theme park. Fun thing about Epic Universe is that there are five different parks inside of it, and they're all connected via a portal system. So the multiverse has now stretched into our theme parks. That's great. The five different parks that are going to be inside of this new theme park are going to be Dark Universe, which is like all of the universal monsters and stuff. I think that one looks pretty dope and would probably have a great time if I ever went there. Super Nintendo World, which is pretty much just a carbon copy from the other Universal Studios park, but I don't know, still exciting. Celestial Park, which I don't know that much about. I think it might be like dinosaurs or dragons or something. Then we have the How to Train Your Dragon Land, which could be sick. That could be super, super sick. And finally, we get to the subject of our video today, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Ministry of Magic. Now, you may see this and go, oh my god, they're doing the Ministry of Magic. That's, that's sick. That's a great idea. I got some bad news for you. That's not the only thing they're doing. There are very few movies my entire family would come together to watch. Harry Potter was one of them. We love the Fantastic Beast films because it gave us a more global view and a chance to step into another era of the wizarding world. That's right, fuckers. We're getting a Fantastic Beasts theme park. The one thing that every single person on the planet wanted. I mean, everybody loves the Fantastic Beast movies. You can even hear the enthusiasm in this lady's voice when she talks about how much she loves the fucking Fantastic Beasts movies. We love the Fantastic Beast films. So naturally, a theme park 
is the only next logical step. I think it's pretty fair to say that the only people that really enjoy the Fantastic Beast movies are people that are already massive Harry Potter fans in the first place. So I, I really don't know why they're theming a whole park around a movie series that nobody gives a fuck about. I don't know, the whole, the whole thing just seems really stupid to me. We really felt that we owed our guests the expansion of the Wizarding World. It all began with Hogsmeade, bringing the village and Hogwarts castle to life. Then Diagon Alley, creating the magical hidden streets of London. And now, with Epic Universe, guests will experience even more adventures inspired by both of these beloved film series. Maybe I'm being cynical, maybe you're gonna walk into this theme park and you're just gonna be so taken aback by how Harry Potter it feels that it's not gonna matter where you are in the first place. Now before they tell you exactly what this park is gonna be, I want you to take a guess. Just take a guess, let me know in the comments what you think they could possibly do to expand the wizarding world. We're bringing to life Wizarding Paris from the Fantastic Beast film and the British Ministry of Magic from the Harry Potter films. Yeah, you heard that right. They're building fucking Paris. Why didn't I think of that? You know what screams Harry Potter to me? Paris, France. I'm so happy that I get to spend an exorbitant, unimaginable amount of money to go to fucking fake Paris where they wave wands around. That is so original. But at least they're gonna build this full-scale Ministry of Magic. Like, that. that's gonna be so sick to be able to explore. We're gonna get to explore it, right? As guests walk through the portal, they're instantly transported to 1920s Muggle Paris. The portal thing is so, so stupid. Like, I know that they're a way to, like, separate the parks without there being, like, this weird mishmash jumble thing, but I feel like Disney did that perfectly fine. I feel like Universal has also done this perfectly fine. Like, what am I doing? Trying to suck Doctor Strange's dick? Why am I going through a portal? It doesn't make any sense to me. Where they pass through the Phoenix Arch that takes them to Place Cachet in Wizarding Paris, inspired by the Fantastic Beasts film. We built to scale streets in Paris. They are literally just building 1920s Paris and saying it's Harry Potter. Am I the only one that thinks this is an absolutely insane thing for them to do? It's okay because it's not actually Muggle Paris because you, you get a little bit of Muggle Paris, but then you walk under the arch, boom shakalaka, you're in wizard Paris. What makes it different than regular Paris? They got some wizard shit in there. Oh, but, but it's from the movie. It's from the frickin' Fantastic Beast movie. Who the fuck cares? You may be a diehard Harry Potter fan watching this. You may be the biggest Harry Potter fan in the world. And I will not believe you if you tell me that you are at all excited to go to fucking wizard Paris. This is the biggest thing we've ever built. Our shortest building is taller than the tallest building in Diagon Alley. That right there is my favorite line in the whole thing. She said that the shortest building in this wizarding Paris is going to be taller than the tallest building in Diagon Alley. And I have one thing to say about that. Who fucking cares? Who cares? Who cares how tall the buildings are? You can't go in them anyway. You, they're literally there to just look at. Now, if you could go into every single building and explore every room and they were rich with detail, then I can understand why this would be a selling point. But you literally just said that you're gonna make the buildings a little bit bigger. Who cares? Like, what does that add? Just such a stupid line if you ask me. It's gonna be overwhelming. With all of the whimsy and charm you've come to learn and expect from the Wizarding World, but with an all new Parisian twist. So you're gonna get everything that you got in these other theme parks, but we're gonna charge you more money and we're gonna theme it to look like Paris. Isn't that the coolest thing you've ever heard? The streets of Place Cachet are so alive with activity. There are shops and restaurants to explore with nods to fantastic beasts throughout. You can just feel magical Paris surrounding you. So that's, that's it? They're just stores with little animatronics in the window? This is Universal Studios we're talking about. So they might not even... Was that really fucking necessary? Was that really necessary, Truck? As I was saying, this is Universal Studios, so they might not even be animatronics, it might just be projections. So you want to pay a whole separate amount of money to go to a whole new theme park to experience Wizard Paris, and inside Wizard Paris, I may see like a singular 
what a niffler is that what they're fucking called but you might see one niffler in a window totally worth a six thousand dollar vacation for your family being able to smell the french cuisine at cafe lair de la salon cafe lair de la salon i don't know about you guys but i'm so excited to go to cafe lair de la salon <laughs> why the fuck did she say it like that hearing the different music that we have playing in the background that's both wizarding and french but guys, you don't understand. The music is going to be both French and wizarding. <laughs> Again, I asked the question, who cares? Oh, you get to go to Cafe La de la Salan after looking at a Niffler, but guess what? The music is also gonna be wizarding music. Isn't that so crazy? There's a lot. There's a lot, guys. Trust me, there's a lot. And of course, we're serving bière au beurre, or butterbeer, as everybody knows it. Oh man, I can't wait to have the French butterbeer. The exact same product that I could get at the other theme park where I don't have to pay money to go to another theme park. In Britain, you may get chosen by a wand at Ollivanders. But here in Paris, you go to Cosme Acajour, the premier wand maker famous for exquisite haute couture designs. You know how in the other theme park you go to this location that you know and you love and that's why you go to that location? Well, in this park, you get to go to some place that nobody's ever even fucking heard of before. I can't wait to go. With your wand, you can cast spells. Is that fucking Jason Derulo? And play with Fantastic Beasts on the loose throughout the streets. Seeing a kid in a robe turn to his mom and yell, I'm a wizard. That's literally what we strive for. Seeing a kid with a cape and a wand that their parents just spent hundreds of dollars on is what we strive for when we take your money. In the heart of Wizarding Paris, guests will find an incredible show, Le Cirque Arcanou. Aw, oh, fuck yeah, I can't wait to go to Le Cirque Arcanou. I've been waiting for years to go to Le Cirque Arcanou. <laughs> They'll go on a journey of excitement, surprises, and compassion as they encounter fantastic beasts they know and love. Compassion? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Is it compassion because you get to look at these cute little creatures? Or are we gonna throw some social commentary about endangered species in there? The show is mind-blowingly cool. Is it? The genuine question. Is, is it gonna be mind-blowingly cool? Is this going to be worth me paying extra money to go to a separate theme park? Le Cirque Arcanou is going to be that draw? Of course not. Nobody cares about the Paris stuff. People only care about the main attraction. You're going to just be amazed at this beautiful theater that exists within this tent. This is the first time we've created a full-scale indoor show for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Guys, this is the first time we ever did something, so we're gonna put it in a park that nobody gives a fuck about. Absolute marketing genius right there. We have aerialists, special effects, puppetry, and so much more coming together. It's going to be really fun for guests to see some of the creatures come to life. Yeah, I mean, like, that sounds cool. The, like, puppets and fireworks and acrobats and stuff. Like, that sounds, like, fun. But that means I gotta go to Wizarding Paris, where there's nothing else to do. Like, yeah, cool. I can see cool animatronics and cool puppets and stuff. But, like, is that the only selling feature of this park? There's gotta be something massive in order for this park to be worth anything. I'm most excited to build the Ministry of Magic. Oh yeah, that's right. We're also doing the Ministry of Magic in fucking France. But don't worry because you're gonna be using the flu network, which apparently can not only just send you through space, but can also send you through time. And with the help of the flu network, guests get to journey from visiting Paris to London to embark on this incredible adventure inside the British Ministry. Isn't that crazy? You go through these giant fireplaces and you journey through the Metroflow, which is wizarding mass transit that we collaborated with the filmmakers to create. It's a multi-sensory experience. Multi-sensory experience? What are they gonna do, fuck me? What are we talking about here? Like, unless you're actually setting me on fire with green flame, I'm sure no one's gonna give a fuck. Like, this is a cool way to enter a ride, I guess, but do you not get to see the Ministry of Magic from outside? Is it is it simply just an indoor ride with the facade of Paris surrounding it? That's fucking stupid. That's so dumb, right? But guys, maybe I'm wrong, because it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> and finally, you arrive to the iconic British Ministry of Magic. You're gonna see what you saw in the films at full scale. 
if this is the picture that they're showing right after she says the words full scale i don't i don't think this is full scale i mean this this looks actually shrunken down quite a bit and now we have the opportunity to actually travel into the ministry at a very crucial moment and help save it harry potter and the Battle of the Ministry is an amazing new attraction. It represents the decades of innovation that Universal has created. Oh, I'm so excited now. We're adding to the Harry Potter canon? This is what I've wanted. This is what everybody wants. They want rides that aren't actually rides, that are just fucking screen projections that are shoved into your face, that add continuity to an already fucked up story because of J.K. Rowling's mold-eaten brain. The story takes place after Voldemort has been defeated. And finally, this is the day in which Dolores Umbridge is standing trial for her crimes against the wizarding world. As we board our elevator lift, we end up realizing that Umbridge has escaped. The guests join Harry, Ron, and Hermione on a quest to capture Dolores Umbridge and stop her from bringing back the time of Lord Voldemort. They said the story takes place after Voldemort has been defeated, but a lot of the footage that they're using is from Order of the Phoenix. And you know the actors are not going to be coming back to do this. And even if they did, they look insanely too old now. Is it going to be screen projections? Is it going to be animatronics? Like, what are we talking about here? Because if they just reuse assets from the old movie, this is going to be dog shit. It's a heart-pounding adventure and is on a scale that we have never attempted before. You'll be right in the middle of this giant battle against Umbridge and Death Eaters throughout the entire ministry. So it's Tower of Terror. What I'm seeing here just seems to pretty much just be Tower of Terror. I mean, including the way that the cars look. We're combining so many different and new technologies to bring this adventure to life at a scale never seen before. This is the most ambitious ride we've ever created. And it's an absolute game changer. It's hard for me to believe that when almost every single thing that they showed other than the few images of concept design are just clips from the movies. This has got to be one of the worst presentations I've ever seen for anything ever. The rest of the video is just them glazing the park that they're working on. And obviously they're going to be glazing the park that they work on because, they wor because they're working on that fucking park. I feel like I'm going absolutely insane because the like to dislike ratio on this video is bonkers. I'm so excited I just walked into my fireplace. The idea of hunting Dolores Umbridge, aka the worst Harry Potter character, sounds extremely satisfying. The universal PR team needs a raise. I've never been more excited for a theme park in my entire life. It's just Paris. Like, they just made a place that exists, but fake and with wizard stuff in it. Not to mention a bunch of wizard stuff that I can't think that people would be too excited for. If you were to ask me what the next logical step would be for Universal to take when creating this theme park, I would say if you want to include these fantastic beasts, do the Forbidden Forest. I feel like that just kind of speaks for itself. There's so much new that you can do with the Forbidden Forest that you haven't been able to do with the other parks, but you chose to do the exact same thing just with this part of the IP that nobody gives a shit about. Now, let's face it, I'm never gonna be able to go to this park in the first place. I don't have any money to my name at all. But if I was a parent and I had to pay insane ticket prices for Universal, for my whole family, and if we were massive Harry Potter fans, I would be so unbelievably disappointed by what this new park is gonna be. But I don't know, maybe I'm just stupid and like to complain about things. Well, that's gonna be it for me today. If you like this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you think I should be nominated to be People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive for the year 2024. You can follow me on all of my social media, especially my letterbox, my Twitter, and my Instagram. You can join my Discord, and you can donate to my GoFundMe if you are willing and able to. The links for all of those are in the description down below. I'm Connor McDowell, and I'm gonna go explore Wizarding Paris to see if it's really worth it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>